With the growing popularity and industry skill shortage of cybersecurity professionals, universities and other educational institutions are starting to offer degrees in cybersecurity and efforts to have graduates job ready for InfoSec roles. But are they any good? With universities famously being behind industry trends and rushing through content, do these degrees actually offer anything of significant value? Or is it still better to do cybersecurity certificates after graduating? So today I'm going to go over several syllabuses of cybersecurity degrees from Australia's top universities for technology and determine if these subjects covered in these degrees will be comparable to security certificates as well as if they make candidates job ready. What we can reasonably assume is that due to the nature of university education, with the subjects being condensed down to only 13 weeks, we can expect a wide range of topics in each subject, but with not a great deal of depth. This style of education is very much focused on empowering students to fill in the blanks themselves and to take their study further. So the first degree we'll be looking at is the Bachelor of Computing and Cybersecurity offered by the University of New South Wales, Sydney. This degree has a wide range of courses or subjects and it looks like it's broken down into the following. We have Introduction to Programming, which is always useful, Computer games, which might be interesting, uh, especially if it teaches like software development lifecycle as well as programming languages. Introduction to cyber security policy and operations, which is definitely a very useful subject. Mathematics, which I might be a bit controversial here, but say I don't think it's terribly required. Computational pro problem solving is definitely a good subject if you're wanting to go down a development pathway. Computer technology is a subject that basically goes over everything from assembly, binary, computer hardware, very broad subject, data structures, representation, uh, computers and security, so again, more sort of security oriented work, digital forensics, which is great, fundamental of data analysis, analysis which is good for if you're looking into like a DBA type of role. IT project one and two is basically having to do a year long project or it might be six months at UNSW. Web development and security, definitely a good subject to have. Securing networks, again, great to have. Project and logistics management, as well as introduction to business ethics would be great for a more how the industry sort of works sort of uh, perspective and picking up knowledge and experience there. Systems analysis and design would be great for learning the STLC. Computer languages and algorithms. I'm not sure why that's a third year subject. The algorithms, sure, but the computer languages you should know by now. Simulation, I'm not entirely sure how relevant that would be. And programming for security would be good to know from a software development perspective. In addition, you'd take two subjects from any school within the university. So this could be like business accounting, languages, creative arts, whatever. And you'd also do a, you'd also have two options. So you could do introduction to strategic studies or, or strategy management and leadership, or you could do law, force and legitimacy uh, or introduction to military ethics. These are not entirely relevant and more so around your sort of government compliance subjects, I'd imagine. Next, we're going to look at Charles Sturt University. And for those who say that this isn't a leading university in Australia, that'd be right. But this is one of the best universities for IT subjects in the country, especially if you're studying through correspondence. Uh, if you haven't already, I'd recommend checking out their free courses because they're just great. I really think this is a great university. So this is for a Bachelor of Information Technology and then you specialize in particular areas. So if we look at the core subjects, so at the start we have Indigenous Australian cultures, history and contemporary realities. This isn't obviously related to IT, but I still think it's important to learn. And then we have things like communication, information management, programming principles, database, computer systems, systems analysts, internet technology, project management, uh, your personal portfolio, so your personal project, which you would be doing over a whole year. Ethics, IT placement, which is actually worth, which is actually worth a subject. And then building reliance in the workplace and building emotional intelligence. These could be, these are smaller subjects, but I think they could be quite useful. 
because we, for those in the industry, we do know how hot-headed we can tend to get. So then they have multiple specializations, but we'll only pay attention to cybersecurity for now. So we see cybersecurity management, network security, project preparation, IT projects, cybersecurity and ethical hacking, plus two of the options being computer networks, programming in Java, professional programming practices, and virtual technologies. I don't really see many of these option, optional extras being that great, apart from maybe computer networks, but you should probably learn that by now in a networking subject. Overall, this university does seem like it is teaching all those core skills, plus the cybersecurity skills on top. So, so I definitely think it is a relevant degree to have. Next, at the University of Sydney, we can see that there is only a master's program and it only comprises of six subjects. So they basically expect you to have a master's of IT before coming into this subject in the first place. So what we can see here is that we have advanced network technologies, applied cybersecurity, computer network security, cybersecurity as a generalist subject, information security management, and web application development. Overall, you would have a core competency from your IT degree, but these subjects here don't seem entirely hands-on. These appear more of your theory-based subjects, apart from maybe web application development, in which case you'd hope you'd learn proper programming practices to prevent uh, particular vulnerabilities. Next, we'll look at Australian National University, which is Australia's top university. The subject here, the cybersecurity offering here is a major on a computer engineering or computer science degree. So you have the following seven core subjects being systems networking and concurrency, cybersecurity foundations, Operation, operating system implementation, computer network, software security, network security, and an introduction to cybercrime. Then you have the electives of information theory, real-time embedded systems, digital systems and microprocessors, and number theory and cryptography. Diving into these subjects, we can say that this once again is very theory-based and less so hands-on practical. Most of these subjects will be entirely theory or might have just a small element of practical skills involved. Next up, we're gonna have a look at the penetration testing with Kali Linux syllabus. So this is a certificate that focuses primarily on penetration testing. It won't teach networking, it won't teach other IT skills. It's expected that most of this is already there, but it does have a very small section at the beginning of just getting you up to speed. So the subjects in this syllabus is getting comfortable with Kali Linux, which would just help getting comfortable in Linux in general learn a bit more about the Linux command line, look at practical tools for what you'd use in a penetration test. You'd look more into bash scripting for Linux, ways to gather information passively, and then ways to gather information actively, scanning for vulnerabilities, web application attacks, introduction to buffer overflows, Windows buffer overflows, Linux buffer overflows, client-side attacks, locating public exploits, fixing exploits, file transfers, antivirus evasion, privilege escalation, password attacks, port redirection and tunneling, active directory attacks, metasploit, PowerShell empire, and, and then a summary of everything that you've learned. So obviously this is a penetration testing certificate, so it's only focused on penetration testing, none of these theory-based subjects. So this will go into a lot more depth than the subject at CSU would offer, and that's probably by design. Next, we have the syllabus for the CISSP, which is more of a security management certificate. We can see here that we have security governance through principles and policy, personal security and risk management, business continuity planning, laws, regulations, and compliance, protecting security assets, cryptography and sy symmetric key algorithms, public key infrastructure and cryptographic applications, principles of cybersecurity design and capabilities, security vulnerabilities, threats, countermeasures, physical security, securing network architecture, secure communications and network access, managing identity and authorization, controlling and monitoring access, security assessment and training, manage secu managing security operations, preventing and responding to incidents, disaster recovery planning, investigations, 
and ethics, software development security, and malicious code and application attacks. That's a lot. <laughs> this certificate is 100% theory-based, and the exam is only multiple choice as well, so you can't really even articulate uh, your understanding. It's pretty much just choose the most relevant. So as you can see, this would be the equivalent of like a cyber, general cybersecurity policy subject, but in a huge amount of detail. This won't teach you all the practical skills of cybersecurity or how to do forensics or anything like that. This will just simply tell you about how all these, all these things, a little bit about how they work, when they can be implemented, what you should do in certain circumstances and things like that. The differences between these two styles of learning are immediately apparent with certificates focusing on one particular area of knowledge and to a great deal of depth while degrees cover a wide range of topics. Due to the limited scope in certificates, this will make you more of an expert in a smaller area of knowledge compared to the general nature of degrees. But don't get me wrong, it's extremely important to have a well-rounded knowledge base with depth in only one or two areas. From a cost perspective, certificates are easily cheaper, with degrees costing well over 3500 Australian dollars compared to about 2000 to 2500 per certificate. Overall, I think certificates and degrees are not in opposition to each other, but complementary. Certificates will only enhance what a student has learnt in their degree and take it to new heights in a specific area of focus. But will these cybersecurity degrees make you job ready? This is still a hard question to answer without doing these courses myself, although the way I look at it is that any IT degree from a reputable university will make you job ready for entry level positions. Typically speaking, entry level cybersecurity roles are not entry level roles. Cybersecurity has been something you move into with experience in other domains. Although this is starting to change, and personally, I think it needs to change as a result of our massive skill shortage. We're seeing some organizations open graduate cybersecurity internships, but at the moment, these are still quite rare, and as a result, will very likely be competitive. My advice to those who want to study a cybersecurity degree is to work hard to be the best in your degree and maximize your chance of getting a graduate cybersecurity role. For those unlucky enough to make it in immediately, don't worry because any IT experience is useful. Learn as much as you can when you have the time and take on certificates. Anyway, I've been Jason from Jason Tech. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.